Hi there, folks. Uh, my name is Nick Hansen. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff has been happening in the last couple of days, and I don't quite know where to begin. So I'm going to read something that I wrote uh, when I was in the the psych ward last um, last summer, and um, it's only made sense really to me today when I stumbled across it after uh, some recent spiritual experiences that I've had. And I, I wrote this in the psych ward. It says, It will come upon you when least expected. Such is the way of the Lord. In your darkest moment, He will stand by your side. Such is the way of the Lord. When you feel all has been lost with despair in your heart, a radiant light will shine upon you. Such is the way of the Lord. You can wander and wait for years, searching for something that does not exist. And suddenly a warm presence will envelop your body, and the greatness of the Lord shall reign His infinite gift among your flock. Such is the way of the Lord. There is a thin line between death and life, and we must tread it carefully each and every day. Organized religion at its essence is a good and beautiful thing, but like all good and beautiful things, corruption exists. Missing links must be filled with true action, full of love, hope, and creativity to continue. I am a peaceful soldier for God, and every day I shall shine my spirit on all who I encounter. Such is the way of the Lord. When you are yearning so deeply for something and you cannot put your finger on exactly what it is, then look to the sky and witness the radius, radiant sun shining upon your face. Look at all of your brothers and sisters treading on, wandering, wondering, searching, waiting, and realize that there is a master plan. Such is the way of the Lord. I must continue to write for hours and hours every day because I feel the spirit burning like a gasoline bonfire through my veins. Too many people in this world have no food, no shelter, and no love. This is cruel and unfair. It shall be changed with the haste of 1,000 chariots. Such is the way of the world. On Sunday, July 25th, 2010, at 12.17 a.m., I wrote, Hey there, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Johnny Butter's American Narcissism. I have now been sober for eight days, and I'm feeling very good. What a difference a week of straight-edge living can make. I believe that I have found a higher power than the ganja, and have been writing a lot of stuff like this and I don't know there's some uh, very good things happening in my head I'm feeling peace and a sense of purpose that I've never felt before and uh, two days ago a uh, um, a messenger really came uh, to my patio where we were hanging out and we were having a casual conversation and uh, and he asked me if I needed the Holy Spirit, and I didn't really think, and I said yes. And, uh, yeah, well, he swung by tonight. He's actually sitting right over there. Some of his Let's buddies are coming over. Yeah, come take a seat, man. So, this is, uh, what's your name? Josh Strike. Josh Strike, yes. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I was... Initially, when it happened, like I felt this great energy, uh, and then I just felt like I had because I've been working on this project, Johnny Butter's American Narcissism, which is like a cinematic mental health movement, and Bipolar Quest, which is they're all tied to the same thing. And and uh, initially, I was like, we got it on film, so I was like, you know, part of me knew something really special happened, and part of me was like, wow, I got a powerful video. The selfish side of me was was thinking, you know. Well, I'll get more YouTube hits and that'll be cool. And then, but it kept on dawning on me that something so special had happened. And I started feeling this just great sense of peace after years of, of fear and, and discontent. And uh, I don't know, man. Yep. So that day I was just, I had just come from Dumb Brothers. And the Lord has been leading me to the craziest divine appointments whereby I just end up in the right place at the right time and meeting you was one of them Nick I was walking to the beach and all of a sudden I got this feeling like I needed to go back and do some push-ups behind in this patio that you that you have out back here and I saw I was like okay walked over there saw you all there and you told me that you had seen me a while back i remembered that and then i remember going to the garbage can and throwing away the banana peels that i had just eaten and praying like oh lord i know i just knew it the situation was set up where i just knew that it was from the lord 
and that uh, I would be talking to somebody in what extent I didn't know, but I knew that I was going to be sharing, going to be sharing my faith. And I talked to you, and we turned out both to have been in the psych ward and have struggled with marijuana. And then I told you, can about, I tell the the yeah you know six about six months ago five months ago I was relapsing on on marijuana I wasn't supposed to be smoking and I went down with my one hitter out back of the the place here and I ran into uh, Josh and his friend were were smoking a, a joint back there and they asked me if I wanted any and of course of course I did and um, so we smoked it and then Josh gave me this generously gave me this big California nugget you know and uh we both have been to kind of hecking back there in our yeah. minds and uh just randomly uh reappeared and i knew that i recognized him and i knew I, you know i don't know uh there's this kind of stuff has really been happening but this was kind of the, the cornerstone and this whole block experiment has taken a new uh a new a new a new light you know um it's been 20 days of pretty you know i'm sleeping better i'm eating better you know but i'm uh, just a lot of fear still and since this happened you know that's the big thing with with mental illness um for me the biggest thing is that it's just fear of everything constant fear and since since this happened uh where um josh gave me the holy spirit um I don't know, something much different is going on, and uh, it's scary, and I keep turning my back on it and going back to old ways of uh, just just my patterns of uh, behavior, but then I'll just feel it, you know, and it just brings such a sense of calm over me, and I've been reading the Bible, and, you know, I don't know, I I swore that stuff off. I went to Catholic school from kindergarten through eighth, preschool through eighth grade. Then I went to public school and got corrupted in college. And I had no relationship. But like I, when I was manic last summer, I was writing all this religious stuff. And I was in this movie recently that was religious. And I just had all these signs that I've been ignoring, you know. And I don't know. You know, I don't know where it's going to go. I just know that I'm going to, it's a good feeling. It's a, it's a really good feeling. You've had an encounter with the living God. It's not religion. It's not religion. It's not. It's the truth. And I guess that's the thing that's helping me is that well, I think our buddy's here. I don't know. I'm going to keep tuning you in on this. Um, yeah. As Neil Young says, there's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly, ain't exactly clear. Hey man, what's going on? Oh, you're on the patio. Okay, we'll be right down. All right, see you in a sec. You 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 are. That's perfect. We'll be down in a sec. Bye bye. Uh, so yeah, that's our story. Yeah. So yeah, he. Uh... I shared a little bit of my story, told him about how I had overcome addiction to pot and how the Lord was just satisfying me with his spirit in a way that pot never could. And I had this experience where I was thanking the Lord for being sober and I asked him, I remember liking just being loaded and I asked him just to fill me with his spirit in a powerful way. And for a couple of hours, I was just so full that it literally felt like I was high, but it was, I was high on Jesus. And ever since then, I've been asking for the Lord to fill me in greater measure. And basically, I just walk around just with the Spirit of God richly present in my whole body, and my whole experience, like in just a globe of Holy Spirit. And that's a beautiful thing. And, you know, that's I guess that's something that I haven't shared but that I'm going to share right now is that, you know, I, when I was manic last summer, I thought I was Jesus Christ, you know, <clears throat> for about 36 hours. And then I ended up in the psych ward. And I realized that, you know, and I don't, I just want to clarify right now that I have no misconceptions about that. I know that I'm, 
I'm in a very stable place, and I know I'm not having that. It's very different. I'm not having that sensation where I believe that, but I, I am feeling something, and I'm willing to to keep going and figure out, you know, if what else I can, what else I can open up, and and uh, so that's kind of where where I'm at, you know, in a much better place than I was last year, and um, I think there's a big there's a big stigma about mental illness, and there's a big stigma about having a relationship with, 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 with Jesus. And I don't know, I just, I'm willing to just how good I felt the last two days and the, how beautiful days I've had and how many people I've interacted with in a positive way. I'm willing to, you know, keep reading the Bible tomorrow and just talking to talking to anyone who will listen and you know, praying, and we'll see what happens. We got some people down the patio. We got to go. Josh Strike, Nick Hansen. This is, uh, I don't know, Bipolar Quest, Johnny Butters, American Narcissism. I'm really not sure anymore.